uh, is better than most other players I've seen at creating his own space. On I think hero. I think it's not only that. I think it's the way they play around it. They leave him kind of to his own devices. Right. They make so much space around the map, and they're like, okay, there's this this solo lone druid just kind of he can deal with anybody pretty much in a one v one, and then it gives a lot of room for fear and crit to move around the map. No, it it, it felt to me at certain times that like Artur had almost watched Matumbaman play that hero, and and the similarities there in terms of the way they use it. Bane ban. Oh, yeah, the, the Chan, yeah, no, no surprise wow. there, really. The first phase Chan, they have shown it in the first phase, uh, two or three games ago in the Galaxy Battle Qualifiers, so both teams very prepared for what the opponent's going to be doing. Secret picked uh, a Sanking in the first two in, uh, versus nope. in the Galaxy Battles. So I think that might have been a team-specific kind of thing because they were playing versus Kingwin. And they, I think the Tink Kingwin does like the Sanking a lot, but see if they. I mean, seeing the way that Yap plays, I wouldn't up. be surprised if they they did want to do it anyway. Yep. But this, I mean, this is the great thing to be fair with the way that this draft's open. There, um, there's all these big Yap playmakers still in. Is there is there a draft penalty time for Secret? They have 40 seconds less. Oh no, they use them during. Oh sorry, they actually yeah. use them for their ban. It's my bad. EGs turn to pick. Right, there's a Yap here. Just take the root. All right, there you go. There we go. I mean, uh, I keep telling you. That's Team Secret's playstyle. They make sure that uh, Yappy has a good oh, pick. Oh, yeah. oh. Seeing the Tanya, I wanted to, I wanted to see him do it. Woo! Now it's interesting. With the Io, though. Uh, that's a strong one. I mean, Io's just good on his own, honestly. I with his talents and stuff. Now you could put him with anybody. And now I, I don't think Tiny is as dependent as he was on Io before, but it oh, certainly makes it even Tiny better now. Remaining. So it's very, yeah, it's oh. different style. So Crit has shown Io oh, one and one so far of this patch. Uh, one of the better Io players out there. I worry a little bit with Io. Doesn't Spirit Vessel potentially really hurt that hero? It does. I mean, sure, once you get the art, you know what I mean? It's, it's, there's a lot of items that you could theorize like that. True. But I, mean, I think it still doesn't stop the hero from being a top tier pick. Yep. All right. Well, there's, there's the Death Prophet, and particularly when you think about that exorcism, physical damage against the low natural armor of Tiny. That does get a little better. Yep. And Io. As the game goes on. Yeah, both and Io. Having, both right. having like zero armor. Yeah, Silence is really good this game as well. They're already setting themselves up to have like a push lineup too. With uh, they're gonna have Rubik's Aura. It can be activated defensively to be able to deal with the burst to help out Death Prophet survive. And then the Tide Ban. We mentioned Tide several times. Would be a contested hero. Yeah, I still think. Interestingly enough, Winter Wyvern still on the table for both sides. And I I will say it again. Said it in the last series. I really think Death Prophet plays so much better at a high level when she has a save. Yep. The double saves too. Team Secret did that a lot. Oh, hello out there, crowd. Oh, this the oh the dabbing. You guys are still into that. All right. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? That is a frightening dab. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Very terrifying out there. Don't look out there again. Anyway, both teams a little bit lacking in the initiation department right now. Yeah, the offlaners have gotten pushed toward the back at a lot of these drafts. A lot of offlaners are banned. I want to. I wonder where Puppy's going to go with uh, with his own hero this game. I mean, there is still the the Puppy Witch Doctor. Um, you know, we we also oh, yeah. know that the Puppy he has, he has, in terms of save, he has played the Oracle in the past. I, I do like the Witch Doctor here against the Tiny. Uh, against Iowa. Tiny Iowa, it seems like it could be very nice and you know complements the push of the Deaf Prophet. I want to see that Dazzle. Puppy's the only person I sure, enjoy Dazzle's, watching yeah. Dazzle. I like Tusk personally. It's a really good save for Death Prophet too. Oh yeah, do the the ghosts That's still a good work, point. right? With the snowball, sure yeah. do. Yes, they do. Oh, yep. just, just like a yule. And I, I don't really, I don't really always Jeez. like having these like two ranged interiors like that, like the Rubik Witch Doctor together. You ideally want to have some kind of like, you know, that hero that can actually set up better in the front lines as one of the supports. The uh, limited man. off laners is looking to be like secrets, kind of grab like something like a Nature's Prophet. I yeah, Nature's Prophet. With, I, the thing is, I was wondering if they'd still want to do it against this this tiny IO lineup. That yeah, the you can sort of answer that very nicely. You've got really strong cleave. You you have that that sort of global potential to react to any sort of split push from secret. Hmm. Well, taking some serious time to think about this one here. Well, anything. I mean, no draft can do anything right now. Winter Rider. Yeah, I, I really like that because it mostly because it takes it off the table for secret. I thought that would have made a tremendous amount of sense as a save for the Death Prophet. Mm -hmm. well, one, one thing that we're seeing a lot with these pro teams is the, the double healing recently, you know? If you can just stack the Ten healing in some way, I mean, most teams seem unto unstoppable. We saw a lot of the Winter Wyvern Omni uh, being picked out earlier in Dream League, and, you know, I have this is healing too, so it's going to be pretty rough for Team Secret to really get in there and get somebody dead. 
They need, they need some bursty hero, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think definitely though, regarding Puppy's role, they, they need to have some sort of save, some sort of backup for that DP. Whether it be, as we mentioned, what the Witch Doctor, Dazzle, uh, Oracle. Or maybe as well just going more for the, the Playmaker. I think Witch Doctor could be a good balance. Sure. They could go a different strat, though. You know, could see a more pushy lineup. That's I like... one way to beat a Winter Wyvern. Mm -hmm. I like Oracle and Tusk, personally. Yeah. Secret for... Puppy. Wow, we're already down to 25 seconds. Oh, oh excuse wow. me. Ooh. Wow. You know, Pudge is oh, not man, All not... right. Wow, that is not the hero that I expected to see. And You can hook the Cold Embrace target every time. You can sure. people yep. out of the, uh, the Winter's Curse as well. Yep. Is that... Who's playing... I, I, I guess Puppy plays the Pudge? I, don't, I, don't, I think Yap still might play mine. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really wondering. So this is going to... Yeah. Looking like... So any other team, you would say that this is definitely going to be the offlane clockwork. But remember that EG has shown Winter Wyvern in the offlane before. I love this punch pick, actually. Timbersaw coming out on as well. One of the best heroes versus Tiny and Io together. Both strength yes. heroes. They get really shredded by this. Yeah, I mean, clock as well. And, and the, the whole Wyvern concept of the, the Cold Embrace again. You know, Secret heavily looking to, to punish that, that save that EG are relying on. And once again, the I, I just love the flexibility of Team Secret with the Timbersaw. All three of their core position players capable of playing this hero at a very high level. Yeah. Particularly Ace. Ace's safe lane Timbersaw is, is one of the better, if not the best, safe lane Timbers in the world and right now. They do not have... Like, of course, the tiny combo is a lot of magical damage, but other than that, they don't, there's not like anything really that significant to deal with that Timber. Like Clockwork Battery Assault and the tiny combo is pretty much it. You can, you can incorporate as well the IO Spirits as well as the Wyvern Nuke, but those are a little bit harder to get off if there's a Timber running directly at you and chaining into, onto you. Going into the final pick of the draft, Chaos Knight still available for both sides. That's a burst physical to bring down the Death Prophet or the Timber Saw. I mean, I wonder if EG's looking at this and saying, we can try and stall this, we can take it late, let's put some mail in the mid lane on the Medusa. That's exactly, I was thinking yeah. Medusa I think, well. you know, we've seen him do it many times before with the Wyvern, and I think that uh, could make a very, very sort of safe draft. I don't think you can do it though, because you, you didn't ban the AM. You just banned the bat, right? Sure. That's tough. Yeah, that, I, you're right, that is still in the pool. I, I really, right. if, if they had banned the AM, I would yeah. totally be on board. All right, they are going to get rid of the bat here. Remaining. And time is ticking for Team Secret. Yeah, they're down to only 25 seconds bonus. It, and EG did that, it, it did that pretty quickly there. Oh, that's a good ban. No D ban. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we, yes, saw it what is. Played, we saw it against the Timber Saw earlier, earlier today, today, wasn't yep. it? Yep. And we saw how well it. He trashed him, man. Damage. Yep. So let's see. Anybody in particular here? What are they missing, boys? What do we need? Well, so EG obviously think that well, yeah, they're going to pick up their Well, yeah, picking first, isn't it? So if Secret don't pick the AM, then, you know, the Medusa okay, could be still fair good. enough. You know what I mean? Like, if, if EG come in with a fifth, fifth pick Medusa, if Secret's last it pick isn't an issue, I think EG's going to have a pretty solid hand there. So yeah. you're saying, Owen, that they're getting forced to play AM. It's the I mean, double, maybe if the they're double on top. I'm, I'm not be totally wrong. No, EG may be thinking about something else entirely and Secret... Probably, uh, well, you, well, definitely more aware than I am of what he's. he's I think it's hard. It's hard. Them. You can't pick the CK right now as secret because if you pick the CK, they come back. Oh, EG comes back with the uh, with the Medusa, and it's crazy. Hey, they hey. Take the they're gonna first. take the LD. Well, this, we've seen Ace wow. do this a few times in the past. I just, I didn't think that hero was gonna be the choice here. This is gonna be a, a very frightening I mean, how LD. Did, how did EG finish this? I mean, it, I would still like to see the Medusa. Sure. I think that would be that super in EG's really comfort zone, but. Am I crazy, but isn't this a pretty hard lone druid game? I mean, you got Io Tiny that can jump on you whenever they want to. You got uh, Clockwork that can isolate the druid and just hammer on him without the bear. I mean, we've seen it's, Secret are very good at just making sure that Ace gets his, his, his position to farm. You know, and this is the sort of hero that absolutely revels on, on having that sort of solo position. While sure. so you have these incredibly active supports, Pudge and Rubik moving around the map. Yeah, great point. So it's one of those heroes that Secrets can sort of forget about, and they know that Ace is going to... He's going to have a really good game. Unless, you know, EG can absolutely crush him. But most of the times that we see in these sort of games, it's very likely that, that Ace's hero gets ignored early on, and Ace is... He's not going to get left behind. So more than likely a Sumail hero with the fifth pick here for Evil Geniuses. What do we see, guys? Is this a Storm game? I mean, it I certainly mean, is. Queen? Oh, Queen's, Queen's banned. banned. Storm could be tough early on, but it is Sumail. He'll catch up in the jungle, sure. 
Storm Reducer look pretty solid. I, I really, I, I still like they the want to play the game. Call. Yeah. They've got the stall with the Winter Wyvern. Like, yeah, if they, if they get Medusa, they can certainly keep the game going on. I'm sure there's going to be that scary point where this Lone Druid is going to be able to start sieging and pushing. And, you know, they do have that with the, the Exorcism as well. So you could have great push in that sense between those two heroes towards that sort of Lady May game. And... Ooh. Wow. I mean, it's another stalling hero. That's a good hero versus Timbersaw. It really is. That's a... That's a pretty good pick here. I don't know, guys. I was really leaning towards Secret after that Lone Druid pick. Can this Tinker survive long enough in this game? Hmm. That's, a, that's it, the question, isn't if, it? If, if the Tinker comes online, this is a pretty darn good Tinker game. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. Let's, let's do predictions, guys. Owen? Oh, it's, I think this is really hard. I... I... I, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with EG, because I think with the Tinker, the, the, the global potential of the Tinker, the Iron, the Tiny, they, they can make big things happen. And I'm not fully sold on the Pudge pick. I'm looking forward to seeing it do some magic, but remaining. we don't see a lot of successful Pudge. I'll go Secret. I'm down for Secret, too. I don't believe in the global. Not this time. I'm going to go with my... You know what? The percentage play is Secret, okay? I'm going to go with my heart and not my head. I think EG are going to do this. Let's yeah. do it. All right. At long last, let's get our second best of three series of the day underway. And to do that, we present to you none other than Toby One and Blitz. Take it away, boys. You know, I hope for some fun coming into this series. Secret versus EG, how could it be not be a fun series? But then we get Puppy Pudge, we get Samael Tinker, we're mixing up the drafts a lot. What do you think about it, Blitz, so far? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I thought the Tinker pick kind of salvaged things in a way. Like it made the lineup pretty okay. I'm an offlaner that can survive without farm. But time like downs up is, I don't know. It feels like they can get run over pretty easily. This timber should at least in the early game have a very good start. Yeah. If the timber can get a good start too, like yeah, we talked about the tinker going against it. So does does Fada require like a really good start in this off lane for Secret in order to survive against the burst damage that Samel will bring, or is he still going to be okay? Like there's a lot of magical burst damage on the field of EG against him with only like null field and whatever items he can pick up to protect himself. Yeah, I mean his laning phase should be pretty good, uh, considering that he's going to be against a melee no matter what. And if he can survive the early onset, like he's gonna be fine. But later on, it's a little bit rough. Does he? Does he just like build hood early on and just try and survive that way? Build pipe up for any kind of extra sustain. I don't know about getting the pipe. At some point, you probably get it. Maybe even puppy grass. Just, just, just hood at the start. Yeah, it's just pipe doesn't necessarily do everything for you. It's pretty good actually in this game specifically, but I'm not sure. Like, it doesn't. You still need items like BKB against heroes like Tinker, unless you try to end the game at like 25 minutes, which Seeker can try to do. They don't really have Rosh heroes. They'd have to commit the Exorcism if they want to rush on. Right now, Secret One try and fight for that bounty rune. It was already called out by Arteezy with multiple heroes missing, mainly the Rubik and Pudgy. Didn't know where they were. Clockwork contests up against Ace and Universe. A couple, a little bit of extra damage for this. Team Secret do claim three out of the four bounty runes. And Universe just has to lose just under half of his life in order for this to happen. But Team Secret, they're creep skipping. They're putting Fighter in the middle. So you start with the Avalanche Puppy. Hasn't actually leveled up anything yet. Not sure if he needs Hook or Rot. But Yabsaw is just running running Escort for Fighter. I think he should. We saw in the previous games, like, if you let this Timber get a bad game or a bad start, it's really hard for this hero to recover because uh, you largely need to farm. And I think in this Dota, you have to be willing to just like get into these constant engagements. And this hero can't do that without farm. That's what we've always kind of known about this hero, is that there's a minimum requirement of farm to activate him and get him useful on the field. And if that's the case, then you need to kind of secure his laning phase as early and far as possible. Real trouble when Puppy has that rot effect and he even backs up to help mid one get the kill. But it was in fact Puppy who gets the last swing in. So combination of both Puppy and Yapsaw, no one sitting in that safe lane. They let like, Ace do it himself. He's not really alone when you've got your bear companion. Like Yogi and Boo Boo. That was cute though. They try to give him the last hit. But the rot after effect is actually what nabs it. Better him than Fear though. Or uh, than Sumail though. Mm -hmm. They get the kill anyway. And they're ready to go again. Yapsaw. 
He waits for the moment. Fear just has to fix the small problem. But this is going to be a lot of pressure. And how does Samal even deal with this? Or actually, maybe we, we look at the other side of things. How is EG meant to deal with this? Like, do you just leave Wyvern sitting in that lane permanently when Arctic Burn goes down? Do you have enough to stop this basic tri-lane pressure of Team Secret? Or do you switch the lanes out and you bring Arteezy and Io into the mid and let Samal have that safe lane? Uh, I don't think you switch. I think you're okay with like this lane configuration. I'm not sure if it uh, changes too much. Like the the lane is going to be a bit rough because I, I don't know where EG might have kill potential. Mm -hmm. Most likely if they go top with the wyvern, but you have you have two heroes that are a little bit static. You've got this wyvern and this Io that aren't really going to move too much. So if you recognize that these heroes aren't going to move a lot, you understand that the laning phase is just about buying time more yep. than anything. Because if you go top with the wyvern, unless this hero has levels, it's hard for him to get successful kills. Yeah. Seems practically impossible against Ace, especially when Ace is able to get solo levels up there. Yeah. Maybe Universe, you can do something in like the first two, three levels. Like you can go for some like crazy outplays. But as long as Bear Man plays pretty safe, yeah, that would be hard. That would be some pretty crazy outplays. Like maybe if you had a Dark Seer on that offlane, you had like double Iron Shell Burn to play with. I can imagine that being a way to outplay, but Clockwork against the Lone Druid's rough. Yeah. So far, CS though is okay. Three out of the four top net wars. I mean, it's a minute in, so yeah. there's not much to extrapolate off this data. It's especially like when, when bottom lane is so swayed with with momentum. Yeah, Crit and Arteezy farming a wave back past their tier one tower, and Fada had that pulled wave we, we looked at before. And they didn't have to worry about it too. Like, like Rubik, like, yep, saw him, puppy. They pulled the creep wave and then instantly abandoned it. So you, you said, like, you needed a good start, you needed some good levels onto the Timber Saw, and that's exactly what Fada was able to achieve. We should just. He's a lot of hyperbole. It's like, secrets up by 500 gold. The game's over. <laughs> really? There's no coming back from this. Toby. Hey, I I remember you crapping on me for things like that. I'm like looking at like, I think it was like three years ago when like I think we first started casting. I'm like, man, this draft looks done. It look, we look over and you're like, it's never won on draft. It's not. It's not a one-dimensional game. This do this game of Dota. It's a bit different now though. Before, <laughs> before you said you say a game can be won on draft now. It was like 60-40, and now it's like. 70, 30, 65, 35. Is that when you sit there and like the, your, your term is a free AM game or the Broodmother pick up, there's nothing to counter it? Yeah, I mean, sometimes in Dota nowadays, there's a lot of heroes like that. They, it's actually been kind of cut out a little bit, which I really like. Like mm. these heroes that used to just get you a free win are largely out of the game, right? You don't yeah. have these like Necros or Venos that, oh, sick, it's a Necro or Veno game. Or <laughs> I guess Brood still is kind of in that category. Yeah, but people are getting better dealing with her. It's, it seems a lot like it has to be that fifth pickup in yeah. order to make it work where you, where you really identify a major weakness in the enemy's draft, yeah. as opposed to, we picked this up in the first two, what are you going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I think it's just easier to be wrong nowadays. All right, we're, we're good to go. Errors are fixed. There's a lot of combos and synergies that we don't quite understand because the lineups are so diverse now, whereas before in the mm -hmm. past, lineups were a lot more static. There's still like certain accepted counters, right? Like if you see an Omni on the other side, you're gonna try to pick Brewmaster or Rubik for yourself or or uh, Morphling. But the counters vary a lot more than they did in the past. Before it was just like if your hero gets countered, the game becomes a lot more difficult for you. Can you win? It's always entertaining watching an Io trying to harass out a Timbersaw because every attack he does gives this reactive armor charges up to Fada. It's He's only got up. one point up in reactive armor at the moment, but having the five charges even when Arteezy has one point in Avalanche to attack with him. Okay, now he's got, now he's holding the tree. Okay, uh, Fada will back up and have some support, support from Yapsaw. Although Puppy's coming in, has that hook. Don't know if bottom lane is the one that he wants to go to. Maybe even tries to make his attempt towards mid again. Might be the better play. Is oh, they, find if they can catch Fear's rotation, that will be nice. But they've got no aggressive wards to the west of the jungle. It's only blocking up the pull camp, which is making it difficult for EG to keep the equilibrium Fada. Dropping low, but Timber Chain's back to the safety of the tier one tower. We'll let Yapsaw take the lane. He needs the second level of the reactive armor. And he brings him the rune. I forgot. That's actually one of the few times I've seen that. He brought the rune slightly closer to the mid one. And you can see, like, they really vay for this guy's game. Like, they yep. want mid one to have a good game every time. I mean, I haven't seen people do that to that extent before. They actually <laughs> brought him. You just keep dragging it, right? Because the, uh, there's no mana cost every time you hit the bounty rune. Yeah, yeah. Or any rune, I sh you should say. Yeah. Oh, mid oh, one. Mid. Being attacked. He does have already 
He's that really spirit low siphon, gone. he's low, the laser! There will be no misses uphill, the range is just too much. Puppy will start with his rot, but there's not much he can really do here. And in fact, now Samael and Fear turn their attention to Puppy, who has to back up. So, a good moment there, making the most out of a small window of opportunity. Yeah. Where the secret supports were not being aggressive on Samael. And that's really unfortunate, considering he just grabbed the regen. Uh, getting aggressive like that, a little bit scary against the Tinker, because the Tinker is almost always going to be the king of trading. He still gets back to the lane for the full creep wave, however. So that's the small upside here for mid one. A bottom lane, Farda, again being attacked, but chaining aggressively forward towards crit. Puppy and Yapso are on the rotation. They'll be scouted out by... Actually, there isn't a creep wave giving enough vision to see them. But Puppy just, will now walk underneath the Observer Ward, so... They're trying to secure the bounty runes. <laughs> and the bottom rune, too. I think Puppy grabs this one, though. I'm not sure if he, there's a point in him hooking it closer. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Puppy grabs it. Like, okay, you can have the haste rune. He absolutely takes both of the bounties. And he goes straight underneath the Radiant Observer Ward Puppy, so Crit should be fully aware of what is happening. He's away from creep waves, but the issue is in mid lane. Samael, he's being babysat by Winter Wyvern, who's holding a holding an extra skill point, so if he needs the cold embrace, he can level it up. Yeah, and up at top, Universe already a level behind. We knew this was going to be a little bit of a complicated matchup. Oh, Puppy's but... actually behind Universe. Oh. He can work with Ace. Ace has level 5, so that, that bear has entangle options. Yeah, but Universe sees him coming uh, through the ward. And now he's going to pull the creep wave. He's going to get hooked in. Puppy. As the battery assault, but with the creep wave coming down, Universe copying a lot of damage from multiple sides. And there's your raw cancelling off the TP, and Universe will die. Entangled up, and Puppy actually claims both of the kills now for Team Secret. Farda's on the run inside the trees, getting hit by the avalanche, but 10 points of reactive armor makes this almost impossible for EG to break through that thick skin of the offlaner. But the thin skin of the green skin of oh, the Death Prophet, he, he actually got him? He caught him midair. Oh boy, where's that? where is that regeneration? It's just not there for Farda, so both the offlane and the mid lane going down for Team Secret. Once again, Death Prophet dying in mid. Yeah, and they needed this right now, EG. The laning phase was going so-so for them. Uh, the Death Prophet before that kill Toby was actually still ahead of the Tinker in terms of net worth, just because of the amount of uh, last hit she has. Also, the fact that they have to split XP. If you notice, the differential is like seven. Seven last hits between the two of them mm -hmm. in favor of the Death Prophet as Ooh. Arteezy. Getting aggressive, but... He's, I think he's, he's waiting for the six-minute rune. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to secure them. They've gotten both of them stolen, like, twice now. Well, it works for Crit. Having that bottle available, he can just consume it and go for the second one. This is some very easy regeneration for, for evil geniuses. Yeah, yeah, Absor was trying to deny them with the illusions, trying to be cute. But Puppy, up the top, trying to go for another attempt on the clockwork. That time it was a lot easier because he was in an entire creep wave. Yeah. But if he gets isolated out, it is quite easy for him to die. Puppy timed that very well. Yeah, he actually found that small opening. So he got a, only scattered by one Observer Ward. The Observer Ward of EG on the top lane was a little bit too far to the right, so Universe actually never got a glimpse that the Puppy ah, had moved all sense. the way to top lane. Part Farter again in trouble. 15 points of reactive armor. So regeneration's awesome, not man. too bad, but Arteezy trying to close the distance, has Toss available, but Crit's a little bit too far away, and Farter's able to Timber Chain back underneath the Tier 1 tower, but they're prepping up in mid. Some mail, the Master Machine's cover is down mid one, and Yapsaw copying a lot of damage, and Fear takes to the skies. Yapsaw will fall. Crit is the one to kill him off. Heavy rotations from EG, but it keeps their mid lane safe. And Samael on track for his BTs. Yeah, he's not doing bad whatsoever. A little bit surprised that they keep going for this move, considering they know uh, Fear's there, and... Io is one of the best rotational supports in the game because if you don't instantly burst down the hero, you're going to get turned around on. And at yeah. the same time, like, I think Sumail really wanted that last hit. He fired off the rockets, but the last wisp spirit manages to catch them in the face. As at bottom, Fada getting harassed up, but doesn't really care about Arteezy solo. Is. Oh, in fact, he actually gets aggressive. Arteezy doesn't have any mana. Burned all of his one charges. Do you, do you actually think like, Team Secret are happy with this, however? Like, you've just picked up your Hand of Midas over on Ace. Like, this is under 8 minutes Hand of Midas on Ace. 4.2k, 4.3k in the net worth on this lone druid. This seems to be the perfect start for Ace. Are you okay with this understanding that you're giving BTs over to a Tinker? You're giving space for Tiny to farm up? 
I think they wanted mid to go a lot better, if you want my opinion. Because I think this Tinker, it's a hero that can be abused by ganks. Like, he doesn't have any defensive abilities, his move speed is very mediocre. Of course, laser is pretty good early on, but if you just get run out by spells, you can largely ignore that. So I think they wanted to try to focus more on mid, but because Veer played this static game of just sitting there, like, he sort of abandoned Artesia at bottom. He didn't try to help him at all. Yeah. Well, they already had crit there to help him out. So as long as as long as they can keep the the rune secured, they're gonna have the regeneration to survive. Yapsaw, Vada wants to get aggressive. There oh, goes your Chakram trying to slow him down. They don't see up high enough. So Artezi and Crit continue to retreat. Yeah, but this this timber saw is starting to recover slowly. This mid lane though, mid one now is gonna get into this position, Toby, where he just gets spammed out. Yeah. Like, you just trade farm with this Tinker, and Tinker will go to the jungle farm that where he can. Are you okay with it though? Because, like, as long as you get to your level 6, you have your exorcism, bring Lone Druid into the lane, you can force down tower after tower, yeah, and then catch up's gonna come by the injection of that money of tower deaths. In fact, there it is there, the tier 1 tower dying on top lane. At bottom, Fada. He's gonna get stunned up in the middle of his timber chain. Fear's right behind him, Fada. Sol rings off cooldown, tossed up into the air, Yapsaw is going to arrive as the level 2 Fable wants to bounce the damage through. Crit doesn't care when he's got tether and tons of stick charges and bottle charges. But babysitting Fada for the moment. They want to make sure if the rest of the lanes are doing okay, especially top. Ace has been completely uncontested right now. 5.5k now worth. Yeah. Has that Midas like we talked about. He's on a really good timing right now. Like his Radiance is going to be so quick, he's already got 2,000 gold in, into the Radiance build. No one's even close, this RTZ Avalanche. Is there a follow-up with a lot of the on Spirits? The They're going to toss him up as well as Fear starts his TP out. They've already used the stun, so Team Secret don't have the damage. But Fada just getting comboed. Meanwhile, Puppy, Samael, and Universe working together. Universe being the primary controller with that hook shot in, and Samael's just the damage from afar. Still, Ace continues to thrive, finds the Bounty Rune, has already taken that top tower. I think that, as weird as it sounds, I think both teams are kind of okay with it. Mm -hmm. Like, the mid lane isn't going so well, but the Tinker's still having a good time. And on the flip side of things, for Secret, Ace has been completely uncontested. Do you wait and let, let Ace farm up the jungle, or do you bring him into a lane to try and force it out? Bring some out to actually TP and march the machines, push back the wave? I'm not sure if there's a point in rotating him. Oh, Poppy lands the hook, dragging Fear back in. They'll keep him controlled with Yamsor, and Fear will fall down. Meanwhile, Fada picked off once again by Arteezy. So it's a one for one trade up. It's an offlaner for a support. And Fear is the lowest net worth on the field. Yeah. Still, that Timbersaw going down once again, a little bit surprising. And I think it's mainly because he's not, he's not accounting for the amount of magic damage that this team bursts for. That's the IO Spirits, especially with three levels in them. Actually, four now. This IO is already level seven. Yeah. Has an urn with two charges. Is quite farmed for an IO. They need some resistance. But right now, he's still trying to finish a magic wand. They've got to be careful now on the side of Secret. Now that these rotations can come. Which yeah. is why we see mid one immediately just go to heal. Back things off. He wants to try to stay as close to full HP as possible. Because if the relocate comes in, he will die. Arteezy's beaten now the tier 1 tower. Feybolt's going to slow him and the creep wave down with their attacks. Even pulling the creep wave over so far, the catapult takes the damage. Oh, look at this rotation. Smoke gank is going to be mid perfect. One. Universe with a hook shot right on the mid one. He burns the exorcism up. He's got Veil available. Goes for the silence, but Arteezy and Crit both come in. That is way too much damage to survive through. Five heroes from evil geniuses end up in mid and they add the pressure to the tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, hook pick up by Yapsor. They just hold crit in position, so they get a small bit of revenge. But EG really making Death Prophet's life a living hell. But meanwhile, Ace having more space. 3.5k gold on him. That relic is almost on Ace, and we're only 12 minutes into the game. Yeah, he's going to TP bottom, grab that tower, and with that, his relic. Oh, boy. It's going to be a huge boon to them. At the same time, we just talked about it. Crit being such a high level, they didn't quite expect this to happen, but you should. You know that uh, at some point the relocate is going to come online. Nobody was showing top. They're not ganking your lone druid, so where could they possibly be? By process of elimination, if they're not defending bottom, then they're all collapsing on you mid. Yep. 
So here goes the tower. As we were mentioning, once that Radiance is up, EG's team fight has to be exactly what it was before. That quick jump in, pop, kill off a hero, and then take objective. But Team Secret looking to get aggressive. Puppy's already moving over to get a deep observer ward behind that mid-tier one tower. He's and, trying to catch that Tinker. Oh, Universe actually rocketed his exact position. There's not even an Observer Ward looking for this. Universe just game sensed it, realizing that probably someone could be moving over. But Team Secret keeping the pressure up. Farda stays on the front lines. Lone Druid moves in. EG will get the trade off as Arteezy and Crit up on the top. They can't fight yet. Relocates on cooldown for another 20 seconds. So it looks like it's going to be a tier 2 for tier 1 tower trade. Poppy. Oops. Missed it by that much. And at bottom lane, this tower almost already going down. It's a tier two. Doesn't look like EG are interested in fighting quite yet. It's a little bit too tanky. Is is trade off. This death prophet though hasn't had the best game. One, three, and two. Had to expend that exorcism early on. I'd imagine the next time they use it though, they want to barrel in for this mid tower. Yeah. But the timing of it is going to be a little bit different because EG will defend that tower, and they have March of the Machines maxed out with boots to travel on their tinker. No way they try to give that one up for free. I think the bottom one is largely positional. Like, if you're not there instantly, you're not going to defend it. Mm -hmm. But at least the mid one is going to be really important for EG. If they can hold it. Invisibility. Team Secret are now just on the defense. They're sending mid one towards the top lane. It's probably the safest place for him to play catch up and finish up that, at least the hood. Oh, well, Yabso probably, I don't know if he, that's really the ability he was looking for. He's got uh, Toss stolen. It's something. It is something. Ace nope. is finishing the last last bit of money for Radiance recipe, and then maybe Team Secret look for something. But EG is looking for something of their own. Fear and Universe smoked up on the hunt. Moving through Radiant Jungle. Fada is the closest target for him as he timber chains closer towards him. And if he comes down the hill, the courier is leading directly to him. Can he get up? Yeah, he can. Chains up the hill. Starts. Universe needs to. Oh no! Oh, no. The creeps! Fear, he'll have to commit the curse in order to hold Fada in position. And they will bring him down. The relocate from Crit committed. They're and they're looking for it. it. Yapsor up on top's already in the right position. He'll pick him up. What's he actually. Does he steal an ability for it? No, he just tosses him out. And mid one combining it up. I think Yapsor and Puppy have taken more kills than any other any of the other cores right now. Yeah, but still, definitely. a kill is a kill. Ace now has that Radiance completed. So this is going to be not a counter to Tinker in terms of kills, but a hero that can shove out waves without being there, Toby. Mm -hmm. And that's really important is that you force EG, uh, you force the Tinker around the map into places that he doesn't necessarily want to be. And if you spread him too thin, that's when opportunities will open up for them. And despite the 9 to 5 score because of the tower kills, it is still in favor of Team Secret, and their five man is quite strong, but EG now are closing the gap quite hard. They're going to start picking up towers of their own now as they grab that bottom tier one finally. Arteezy getting the last hit, and now Secret. You want to make moves. You can't allow this kind of game to happen. You have a Timber Saw on your team. This hero cannot create space for you. It's got to fight if it's going to do anything. And so I think the mid tower is likely the next target for them. They just smirked up. And then, look, they're all around this mid area. They want to just transition it into a push and start invading the jungle of Team EG. Puppy with that haste rune, and that's that deep observer what he put down before. Nice. Lands the hook onto fear, pulling him back into this member. So now mid one, if he wants to, can commit the exorcism, and they can just force down this mid tower. Then again, Ace is so strong, they can save the exorcism for the tier two tower. So Mail's going to try and keep him at bay, just rocket spamming up. Already has everything he wants. They want to jump on him. The blink dagger will allow him to either get close or away. There it is. Ace will take the mid tower. That's all the tier ones lost for both sides on the map. And more and more money flooding in to this lone druid. It's important for Secret to try to grab that tower in return because Tinker's so good at defending these tier ones early on. And if you can't get it, the later that it goes, it's harder for you to secure this Roshan objective. Tranquil's done. He's almost level 15 already. Yeah. Do we actually start looking into these these high talents as well? Considering how much space you've managed to get on the lone druid. I guess there's something fantastic in the uh, in the 20 and 25. Like he just gets a spirit bear armor at the moment, so keeping his bear alive as much as possible. Yeah, sure. You get the uh, battle cry grant spell immunity, and you just run at people. It's awesome. Sounds then your bear great. doesn't, you know. 
He doesn't get hurt. You keep your boy alive. Leave no one behind, Toby. Including pets. Exactly. It's kind of... I don't really know the lore, but I, I don't know if it's a pet. I think it's more like... A companion? Like his... I don't know companion. That's... That has connotations that I don't want to explore. <laughs> more like his brother. I was going to say brother. <laughs> Wait, I don't know why you went that way. Yeah, that, that's, that's a movie. That's Brother Bear, man. Mm. As Arteezy now farming up huge stack of Ancients. Good farm for him. How's his item progression going? He's going pretty good. SMY He's got going AC. into AC. Do you like him not going for the aggressive Blink Dagger or Shadow Blade? Like, uh, so not actually getting anywhere near the, like, the Silver Age to break the Timber? I think the Clockwork is going to be the scouter for him anyways. So I'm not sure if it's too necessary in this game. Because the eye can just relocate him into the back lines anyway. So. Yeah, that's the plan. It's not super important for him to initiate. There's still value in the Silver Edge though. But he needs armor if he's going to fight. Almost has it now too. As mid one, desperately trying to catch up. Like his net worth is just like... Yeah. Tanked. He's got 6,500 net worth. Vada not doing too much better than the uh -oh. clockwork. And that's. Let's well, try and get it from a fight. It's going to be a, uh, a three man smoke up, but Vada wasn't caught inside that smoke. He's going to be pushing at the bottom lane instead. As he should, and the bit. Radiance is still active, so. They should know this. Like, there's just an invisible bear pushing out bottom. And <laughs> Secret, it looks like they're getting a little bit desperate. They're starting to place some tinker wards at the same time, so this. Smoke isn't going to mean nothing. The smoke from EG, maybe it can mean something. Like, I want to need that Dire Observe Ward. Yapsaw is the only one up on this top lane. Oh, Sumail, Defending though. the Tier 2 tower. Oh, he he was, like, right next to them for a second, and now they're going to know for sure. And they're going to go for Yapsaw, thinking oh. it's a free kill. Yapsaw tossing away Universe. Hookshot's available. They go on the jump. Here comes Everyone's the TP mid one. It's a nice silence, but no real follow-up. Master Machine's already down. Yapsaw is dead, too. Fear could potentially initiate this if he wants to put down the Winter's Curse. They'll start get by getting rid of the bear. Ace staying on the ball with them, keeping that bear burning down. Crit, the Savage Roars have to continue to run away. Crit will earn charge himself up, and there goes Ace's bear. Quick resummon. Still has 17 one charges on the Aya, so he wasn't going to go down from this. No, bear wife. <laughs> you went down. Bear wife? Bear brother, bro. Bear brother, okay. So bear you brother. go with mine. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy to go with brother bear. All right. That movie was okay. Appreciated. Still, that was really nice for EG. They grabbed the last hit on the Lone Druid Bear, which matters. Like, the cooldown on that is pretty significant. And on top of that, they got the App Store for free. They forced a lot of rotations. The only thing that Secret got out of that entire sequence of events was that Tinker Ward at bottom, who... I mean, maybe it pays off. You don't know. Sumel's largely been playing in this top area. He's only been farming around this jungle area. Hasn't really place himself bottom because I think he anticipates the danger of bottom. Yeah. They've got this one ward here, but not much else in the way of vision. Do you like the build with the uh, both going Ether Lens and Kaya together? Yeah, it's pretty common nowadays. Is mid. They're setting a trap right now. Puffy, no hook though. Uh, wait for Samael. The line is almost right. He'll have to go a blind. It's just on the edge. That's the reason why Yamso now drops that Observer Ward. As they see Arteezy and Crit move towards him. The hook! Nice it hook. lands on Crit, isolating him out. And well, Ayo will get popped. Very nice hook by Puppy. Been quite on point, 2 1 and 4 right now. But feels like it's not quite enough. They're going to start drawing the line around. Secret. Want to try to grab more out of this if possible. They're going to be ready to. That's, it's not the full AC coming out, but it's Hypercern and Plate Mel. This, uh, this bear is going to get very, very tanky. Yeah. Quite an even game, though. 22 minutes in. Yep. Yeah. Under on on 1k, the difference is it's practically zero. Yeah, just shows how even these teams are. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Still, Lone Druid holding a large amount of that net worth for Secret with the number twos both over 10k for EG, but then you hit 7.3. Like Dyer's when Timber and, and Death Prophet are sitting at the exact same net worth, you Not know exactly. how much pressure is on Ace. He got used to this in China. And he's having to do it all over again. Maybe a little bit of growing pains again, where they have to readjust to yeah. communicating with their mid laner and not having to draw. Fada got pretty good at that, to be fair. He did. He did. Yeah, he started getting comfortable with that, but Secret gonna go for another smoke. They kind of sense things. Like, they need to start making plays right now, because I think they don't want to play against this 
line up where EG can just stall things out. They the might game like, becomes a lot more risky. They might be getting this line right. So they're passing past Roshan. EG are not in no, this. Instead, EG are looking to push and fight the tier two tower. There's your hookshot forward. Farda, can he survive? Hell no, he can't. Everyone's down. Potential buyback to now go into this fight. They're going to need him if they take it. Let's Poppy look the hook. looking for the hook line again. Fear Here is we the go. primary target. Pulls him in with the Fade Bolt. They get the kill. Arctic Burn stolen by Yapsol. Looking for his moment. Universe starts the run. There's the Arctic Burn. Slowing down Universe. The bear goes to work. The blade mail making difficult. The relocate out. The crit able to come in for the save. But he'll sacrifice himself. No shenanigans with TP. He's got two seconds and he'll come back to his own death. Well worth it though for the two supports to die in exchange for the Timber Saw. Plus you force everybody around the map. Sumail already sensed the danger in that. Immediately left. Trying to go for his Aghanim Scepter. Tons of value in that item by the way, Toby. The Quad Rockets, the Bouncing Laser against Lone Druid. Yep. You know, I'm still sitting here going, you know what, Puppy can just turn himself into that. I don't care. Like, he's got eight Flesh Heap charges out of the nine kills of Team Secret. Keep building it up. It's, it still feels like it's not quite enough yet. Like, they need to get this DP exorcism oh, involved. Universe going off the exact man. Puppy wants to break free, cuts free of the cogs. Rockets. And now, here comes the Savage Raw, but rockets from Samal will be able to connect. Where's this revenge? Universe picked up the Blade Mail's doing his work once that more. That bear is so low. Ace has a resummon available. And there it is. He'll use it straight away. Instantly does so, fearing that maybe Sumail blinks forward with the laser, would finish it off. And Secret, they now lose the gold lead, very slightly in favor of EG. Yep. Supports, but though, have a lot more farm on the side of Secret. That's what's kind of counterbalancing this, if you look at the core difference. Mm -hmm. Like, Yapsor is... I mean, Yapsor is Yapsor, right? <laughs> yeah. But the fact that Poppy's also at 4k, like, th this is what we were... I think we were discussing this a lot in Shanghai, about the lack of 5. Actually, I think it was also in Frank, but where was this 4-4? That we're, that we're running, and that's exactly what Team Secret have in this game. Yeah, There's Poppy no is not sacrificing himself. Universe gets spotted out. The Absorb pops. <laughs> it's the Arctic, Arctic Burn. <laughs> Fighting from the trees. Mid one's in here. He's actually going to pop up his Exorcist. Oh, he's they want. oh, he got him! He grabbed him mid hook. Puppy's coming over, and, and Absorb with it. the stolen hook cancels the TP. God, I love this guy on the on Rubik. Oh man, that's that was some odd styles. <laughs> you can't even feel. That bad is Arteezy. He's setting up for an attempt at top. Fada gonna yep. get gone on though. Avalanche the and toss combination. Fada hook shots out and the life regeneration. 20 reactive armor charges isn't enough when Samael is that quick to the front line. And now only 500 gold away from completing up his Aghanim Scepter. This is a huge problem, by the way, Toby. They essentially have a dead hero in this Timber Cell. This hero can't really fight right now. He doesn't have enough farm. He doesn't tank. He doesn't start fights for them. He doesn't come with the stun. He was supposed to do a lot better in the laning phase. And just with the sheer amount of deaths that he has, 1, 6, and 0, this is the problem with Timber, is you overestimate your strength. Let's let's have a look at this again. <laughs> Pull it back in time. <laughs> rewind, 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 play. Hook, hook. That was close enough. Bunch of hookers on the bot lane. <sighs> sure. <laughs> sure. Aghanim's is up for the Tinker. And amplification galore for Samael. Yes, it's a very good timing for him right now. And the game becomes a little bit more difficult for Secret, who they're still trying to use this exorcism. We saw it at bottom lane. They tried utilizing it. It still wasn't uh, quite effective as EG immediately going to smoke up. And look at the position that their lanes are in right now. All three lanes being shoved in. Secret can't go for a smoke of their own. They've got to deal with this first. Actually going for Roshan. Yeah, they've immediately made their way in. Secret, though, they're going to show two of their heroes mid right now. They should get pinged out. They're going to go for a smoke. I this think they have some idea. Yeah, they, they checked it before. That was what they were doing before the, the gang happened up on top when Fada died. The bear will do the scouting, goes inside the pit. This is problematic because you don't want to really resummon the bear just yet, but he's down to 600 HP. Yeah, they want to reset. Both teams know that their smoke's largely useless as... I felt like EG should have gone for a play there. Like, get into an actual engagement, because you know that secret. All three lanes are shoving in, into their side. So they have to react to this. And Fada wants to go bottom. Like, he wants to have that farm. Somebody should get it. Well, Samael's moving over. Ace is nearby here, and <laughs> Samael trying to be a little bit devious, cancelling the TP at the last moment. Making secret guess where he is. Hook from Puppy. This one will be astray. And he actually loses his Observer Ward because of this, with the Sentry Ward down from EG. 
And they have vision superiority around the Roche pit. That felt like the first hook he's missed in quite some time. As Sumail, he's starting to get low at bottom. They're pinging him like crazy, but... <laughs> the bear's making it impossible for him to blink away. Yeah, and Fada might even get caught out here again as he timber chains away. Is going to make his way out as Arteezy. Issue when Arteezy race. doesn't have maneuverability. Like AC, SMY, and now he's going into the Daedalus. So huge amounts of damage for him. Mid one finds his target. Blink forward, your step there, and Yapsaw! He's still got the stolen hook, picks him up, throws him down. He's only got the rockets, but he can body block it. Allowing mid one to get a much needed kill. And Please. now Team Secret with no Clockwork. And Clockwork doesn't have buyback. They go in for Roshan. The trade-off will have to be the tier two tower on bottom. And that's if EG doesn't pull in any shenanigans around Roshan. Yeah, and Fear might go for it right now. He can't just... He's got Arctic Burn and Curse available. Yeah, he can fly in. This might be a decent opportunity. He's got Timing. a time as well, though. 1,000, 800, 600, 500, 200, 100, gone. Timing, not there. And mid one very aggressively blinks forward, hoping to find something. But they won't. Tier 2 tower was the trade, Puppy. Has a hook opportunity on bottom lane, and he's got it. Just not long enough to grab Arteezy. They almost had like two Pudges on their team for a while. They had the Pudge and the Clockwork, of course, as Yapsor is playing the real Clockwork right now in this game, is uh, styling pretty hard. At the same time, EG, I think they're going to be pretty unhappy about that trade. They Secret. still they still have such great high ground defense against Team Secret. Yeah, Secret, I mean, they've got to kind of force things, and that's why you keep seeing these inefficient exorcisms by mid one that don't lead to anything. Yeah. Because he keeps thinking like, well, is this a fight? I better pop it, otherwise I'll just die without using it again. It's really hard for them to transition the exorcism into pushes because of this tinker. So he's kind of just like in a weird dead spot right now where he doesn't feel like he can use exorcism to get kills. At the same time, they're not getting objectives. And so he's just popping it whenever he sees any opportunity. And I think yep. that's the right idea. Either you use it selectively or you just use it whenever you feel like. It's like, what, what you, what, you want to force a five-man fight up against the control that Samal offers by both Laser and the March of the Machines. It seems almost impossible to deal with that. And we still haven't seen the effect of a curse from fear. Like, Team Secret are, are purposefully not grouping up for this unless it's just one quick pick. But they have to look for the objectives. The Tier 2 tower is up in mid, as well as top. These are the easy ones to claim, and mid one has that Aegis the Immortal to try and burn if they can find initiations. Yeah, and even though EG, they're still leading by a little bit, it's oh, actually secret right now. He barely funny. misses on Fear once again. Fancy wing work from Fear. But this really doesn't take long to bring down a tower. The advantage of Team Secret. You get a small opening and Lone Druid will melt buildings. And he's almost got, like, it's actually, yeah, the Aghanim Scepter. Now 400 gold away from Ace to, for Ace, actually no, he's got it, he actually has it. The Curry just needs to bring it out. So now you can have a, a Lone Druid Bear, not just Radiance burning, but properly pushing in lanes. It's not just that, it's to deal with the Tinker. It's so when the Tinker comes, like, there's that bottom position, if he has the Ags right there, like the Tinker 100% dies when he's on top of him, and he Savage Ordered him to like mess with them, but if you get like one root, Tinker just dies in two seconds there. So that's what they're using it for. So that Ace doesn't always have to be there to go for the catch. Mm -hmm. Like imagine a situation where they have Yapsor just falling around the bear. They find an opportunity. They can kill they can kill the Tinker pretty easily without them having to rotate. As Ace moves his Radiance in. Smart play. So he gets two Radiance Delusions at the same time, so he can push out all the lanes. Like this is how you have to play against Tinker. You gotta shove in the ways Ooh. repeatedly. Mid one almost had him. Blinked forward, was looking for the Yule Scepter attack into Samael. It's hiding in the trees. Won't be long before the Tinker Wars start to Avira Puppy. Hawks, and he got him! Pulling back Universe. Supporters coming in the form of the bear, even with the Savage Draw, making sure there's no hook shot, nothing to interrupt him. And this is 53 seconds with no clockwork. He's down for the count. No cogs to spray him out. Samael has to get this March the Machines down, but the Lone Druid Bear just has to beat to the town. Miss Chance, problematic. And fun. <laughs> Burning his pipe to hook away. They may try and change their, their, their line of attack. Exorcism now is very good against the, against the laser, but Poppy had to TP back. Top lane was pushing in too much. They're retreating. Yeah, and Dota, you never let your tier three just get hit like that for free. Absolutely no reason to. Because uh, if the fight goes disastrously, maybe you get a five-man wipe, the Tinker just TPs up there, shoves in the wave, and they relocate, kill your tower in like two seconds. It's... The reason why it's always brought up 
by a lot of people, like, the importance of shoving in waves is because uh, you need to reset the game for yourself at all times. It's not just for the offensive potential, it's also for the defensive potential. Because there's always the chance that you lose a fight in those situations when you go for five-man pushes. Mm -hmm. And if your lanes are, one or two of your lanes are in really bad position, you almost just immediately have to buy back. It's not just a lost fight, you're going to lose on top of that. So it's important to reset these things whenever you can. Which is why people always go back, even if it feels inopportune. Like, sure, they have Aegis, they have all their items, but at the same time, make sure that your lanes are correct before you make these risky plays. Yeah. Well, top lane, Hawkshot's out. This is how much they're committing. They're going after the bear, but a quick savage roll sends Universe away and the bear back to relative safety. I suppose it's not that long a cooldown on a Hawkshot. And we're already seeing it, she said, like exorcism being burned. You find something which is slightly advantageous, you go for it. The secret, they smoke up themselves. Three heroes moving down mid. Fado's gonna have his smoke broken, revealing himself for a quick moment. Still no Tinker Wards on the Radiant side of the map. My puppy wants something. Fear. Oh, Smoked mid one. up he as got well. I actually found him in the trees. Fear is moving up to try and help out. Mid one. He's on the run with the exorcism up and support is in the neighborhood. Father's going to be there. The hook, they pull him over, dragging him away as Timbersaw, who was cursed up. Samael is barely surviving. But Chris helping him out until Father jumps in, bringing down Samael. Tinker on the sidelines. Mid one wants to go for more. Hook from Puppy actually connects into Yapsaw. So a little bit of line wrong. But Crit, so low. That exorcism. Reaching him on the side, some mail is bought back to continue to be part of this, but Secret get what they want. Two kills, and then a push into the tier two tower. What a ghostly image. This was a massive win for Team Secret. Sumail buys back thinking that there's going to be more of an engagement, but with crit down... Bobby! <clears throat> Universe, too good. Very nice catch from mid one. It only takes one ever. I think that Sumail assumed that he had a buyback anyways, because... Your Tinker's dead on the enemy sidelines. You're just going to go for a push, so you try to buy back to refresh the cooldown as soon as possible. Yep. It's not even just about anticipating the fight. It has two layers to it, and at the same time, Secret, they did manage to grab that bottom racks, and every single base lane that you open up against a Tinker makes the game so much easier, because he always has to deal with this bottom wave now. Yep. I'm interested to see why Team Secret didn't just destroy the shrine they were standing next to. They had Lone Druid's Bear there. Sent him back for a quick moment. The no bear exorcism. now has Shadow Blade built up. Yeah. I think without Exorcism and no Aegis, there's, that's a really risky fight. They just don't want to reveal the position by attacking the Shrine? Yeah, there's no reason for it. You can just reset the game a little bit and wait. They now, do have their own Observer Warden Sentry on the hill to the south of it, so they've got decent vision unless EG want to smoke out. All it takes now is one catch on this Tinker and the game's done. They're trying to pincer. Arteezy, Crit, and Fear. From the north they come. A BKB is flying out to Arteezy. This will come over the over the quad as they look for their target. Arteezy already initiating the curse is out. It's over on the Death Prophet. Yapsaw pops to the attack of Arteezy. And Crit's gonna help him try and bring down mid one. Yule Scepter into the air, buying some time, but time won't be enough. A double kill for Arteezy as Team Secret. He does so much damage. Losing critical here is Crit! Fada. Rips him up, another Bloodstone charge, gets pulled in. And surprisingly, despite that kind of start he has, he's got positive Bloodstone charge. Oh, the charges. bear, the bear. It's, wait, what is it? It's, it's actually going to go for the melee rack. Shadow Blade in, and he actually takes the melee racks. Rage racks as well. Where's the support? Where's it coming in? Pull the bear out. out. The damage. Ninja bear is what we're looking at. That was absurd. He just took a full set, got the bear out too, doesn't feed any gold out of that. Another lane down now for EG. They've got one to play with. They're starting to run out of chances here. They're starting to march down mid two. They're going to grab this tier two with the Death Prophet down. No way the mid one buys back for that. No, but it's but just the bear's, the bear's making it difficult. Yeah, Arteezy is here. He's fighting through Radiance and he knows this bear is somewhere hunting him. Arteezy is burning to the Radiance, so he can't get away while Puppy as well as Fada battling against Universe. Samael's gonna come in to help out that spell Livesteal. It keeps Puppy alive for long enough to let Fada get the kill onto Universe. And now it's another battle. It's Fada for his life. Yapsaw comes in to help. Steals the double rockets, but the curse is out. Well, at least it's only a Timbersaw attacking into the Rubik, but now in comes the cleave of Arteezy with the combination. Arteezy gets back-to-back -back double kills against Team Secret. And the gem was dropped. Secret getting a little bit sloppy here. 
It feels like they're anticipating their win, but you've got to play things out at all times in Dota. EG can always hold these creeps with the benefit of their Tiny and their Tinker. They have really good wave shove, still have a solid amount of team fight. Secret, they still have to be careful about this, Toby. It feels like they're getting a little bit too over eager trying to end the game. Mm -hmm. No need to. Ace is doing so much for you right Here now. Allow, the bear again. allow Ace to do this for you. <laughs> this is <laughs> just being an enabler. That's all this is right now. Don't, Ace don't waits die. it out, pulls the bear back, takes another tier three tower. Arteezy and Crit are trying to go for again a ninja play of their own. They're inside Roshan. No one scouted this out. The bear was nearby. Crit poke pokes his head out, but there's no observer wards for Team Secret looking at this. Puffy. Finds Universe a little bit further up inside the river. And Universe, oh, he's going to get hooked over towards Puppy up in the river. Keep the rot going, and they'll kill off the clockwork. But it's enough space created for Arteezy now to claim the Aegis. Crit has the cheese. Yapsaw jumping in. He picks up the Io, wants to drop him down. Crit, there's a Yule Scepter. He'll fall down once again. A quick silence. Is he going to burn the cheese? You know he doesn't want to, and he won't. Mid one has the double kill, oh, and this will actually route. have Arteezy stranded in the mid lane. Curse create space. Puppy getting beaten down by the bear, but it's not enough of a beat down. Puppy will survive an EG in full retreat. They want to keep going, but he gets dragged back in by the telekinesis. Arteezy wants to keep swinging, but the Yule Scepter unable to actually hit that high in the air, even with the reach of the branch. They're focusing the racks on oh, Toby. Mid one's in. He's going after fear. Look at Ace. Uh, he knows. He knows. He's playing objective-based gaming while mid one creates space with Yapsaw. <laughs> They gotta do something about this right now. They're gonna get mega creep for sure. There's no glyph available. They're hard committing. Oh, again. They just keep getting controlled. It's telekinesis. It's just being savage rod. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get well, the range. Try and save it. The bear's coming back down for the range. One swing will do it. The megas are now up for Team Secret. Ace will finally be brought down, but thanks to the power that is the Agadim Scepter, the bear can continue the good fight on bottom lane. But Team Secret, 1919. It may look even on the kill count, but 14k is the advantage and the four lanes of racks to Megas. Ace has just been absurd in this game. Like, the amount that he's done for his team. Maybe they lose one fight, his team is doing some space crazy stuff. On the other side, Ace is just like, guys, I'm hitting racks. I have no idea what the rest of you guys are doing. <laughs> sure, give them all the chances that they want. But this bear is insane. His item build, too. The fact that he went for the Shadow Blade. Is, is he going to solo kill Crit here? He's going to go for it. He's oh, they know, though. He's, he's Radiance burning Crit down. There's not a lot the Crit can do about it. The Bear will attack. At least Arteezy was able to get the Avalanche toss off. And Crit, oh, no, supports arrived in the form of mid one. One more attack. No, Crit still got the regeneration and the cheese available. Again, doesn't want to burn it. But now Fada TP onto the back of the Bear. The Shark from Silence. Mid one jumps forward. There goes your cheese burn. A Yule Scepter up. Mid one already starts his TP out. They burn the extra oh, advantage. Right now. But again, the bear doing the work. Fada back in with the Chakram chain. So much damage. Support is arriving in the form of EG. Curse is out, but so is the cold embrace from Yamsaw, giving Fada that little bit of extra time to continue the fight. He'll hookshot himself out of the cogs while Fear caught in the back lines by Puppy. They bring more support forward. Fada, whoo! That's a lot of damage with a swing. Down to 90 HP. It's not enough to live. Arteezy, he's finding back to back kills, but needs more. Puppy is also finding more and more kills. Not easy, not enough life to survive. Tree in hand, but nothing to swing with when all his HP is gone. Meanwhile, back at home, it is in trouble. EG are losing tier four towers. The creep way pushes. Samael is the man on defense duty. While well, Arteezy wants to keep this battle going up on top. What can he really do but die? It's actually that. He dies. That's it. Mid one, TP's forward. They look to keep the attack going. Arteezy, well, at least he's only fighting pigs for the moment and then tossing it back into the shrine. It's gonna be enough. The bear though. Mid one's gonna go down. The bear is doing the work, but at least they got rid of the death prophet for now. It's getting low. He's just trying to kite around his team. Now TPing on top of that. They're trying to go for the game. Oh, you may as well just buy back and finish the job. The Radiant Ancient down to 1000 HP. The bear is waiting, prowling, looking for the opportunity while Pumpy jumps in close. He's got no hook available for the moment, but here comes the bear, beating into the rack. Savage Roar, creating more space. Then they back off with the bear. No fortification available. They're keeping the defense up here. EG while Fada looking to keep Crit out of the fight. The hook shot is nice. They got the the bear. bear is low. It will drop down. Resummon is not available for Are a minute. Even the rocks, it looks like they're going to. 
to. Aces retreating too much damage from the Tinker Rockets. The creeps, they're slowly bringing the, the, the shrine down. That now, well, goodbye, oh Bada. They're actually holding. 820 HP on the Radiant Ancient, and Team Secret cannot close this game out. Did you see what happened? Fear laid down a tree so that Arteezy could grab something, because it was actually <laughs> too far for him to go down. He needed to defend that Ancient, so he plants some trees, happy little trees, all around right now, <laughs> so that he can constantly refresh that pool. What a hold. I, you have to imagine it's just going to be another attempt from Secret. They were disciplined. Yep. They didn't go for all in buybacks. If you go for the exorcism with the bear, EG are going to be really hard pressed to hold this. They don't have a whole lot left in the gas tank. They've got one buyback available, but it's more a race against time. They've got to shove out these waves as completely as possible without getting picked off right now. And there's a chance, but it's so unlikely. It does seem like a very tall ask. I was surprised that they even held that last one. Once the Lone Druid gets a BKB on his bear, what can they do against it? He can just march in, hit that Ancient. So they've got to take fights outside of this area. Yep. They've got to shove in all three lanes, take fights outside this area. Do not let Secret enter your base. It's like, what do you, what do you actually have to control that? Do you... I don't know. And <laughs> you want to going, they're, and... they're just going for the YOLO. Like, oh. They're going to dive bomb down mid, Here we try go. to sneak in. They don't want to take a fight right now. Mid one's bringing the creep wave. Samael might be the one to catch out. He's using Shiva to try and force out the lane. Fata comes in. Yapsaw gets the grab. Riyam stolen. At least he can get the grab once again. Riyam again and hold him in position with the fade ball. The run is he out here. He's got the life. Then you yourself to up. He needs to blink away. He doesn't have it when he takes the damage from the fall. Samael so low. Chris trying to keep him alive. And he almost gets back the relocate. It's still not enough time. Tinker will fall, two minutes on the sideline, and that is good game. Crit will call it oh as my. Team Secret will finally close this game out. 44 minutes it took, but the game belongs. Fada even at the end. Bloodstone suiciding to mark his territory. <laughs> Says this game is ours. That was... So Misery messaged me in the middle of that game.